Hey everyone, Reese here with Cranberry Alarm RA3D. Today we're going to be talking about our hopper and how we're serializing fuel using vector and intake wheels along with a powered hopper to speed our shooter to shoot effectively. Coming up now on Fun Robotics Network. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Oshkut is the premier metal cutting service for first teams. No minimum order, options for same day turnaround, 3D tube laser cutting, and with nearly 500 variations of metal in stock and ready to cut. Just upload a file and claim your 50% off discount when you scan the QR code or go to funroboticsnetwork.com slash OSHCUT. The Studica Robotics Nav X3 CAN is the next generation IMU for FRC teams. With a new gyro, accelerometer, magnetometer, and CAN FD connectivity, it delivers accurate data, easy calibration, and better control. First teams can apply for a 25% off discount at studica.com slash robots. And don't forget to check out their new bonded wire and pre-drilled extrusion available now for the rebuilt season. So to start, um, I'll go over the basics of kind of how our hopper basically works. Um, ultimately, we're going to have an intake here on the front that's going to be moving balls from the ground and into our hopper system. Our goal is to create a really big hopper zone um, that can hold up to 50 balls. Um, but right now, this is a little uh, smaller version just so we can show off what's going on here. Um, we're using these two-inch vectored intake wheels right here. Let me see one. Which are going to vector the ball. Um, horizontally until the ball eventually gets to the center at which it'll contact these 2.25 inch wheels, compliant wheels, and then shove it into what would be the shooter. We're using the Andy Mark uh, silicon tube tubing kit. Uh, this is the, these are the one and a quarter OD with the uh, silicone tube shoved over it. Uh, and then at the very bottom, we're using the thrifty bot two inch squishy wheels to kind of give it that little kick to pop it into the, into the shooter. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start with a quick test. We'll just go and demonstrate just one fuel and kind of show what that looks like. Go ahead. All right. So you can see when one comes in, it feeds it really, really effectively in getting the ball to move towards the center. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and do just a simple four stack. Uh, this is basically just having four balls uh, kind of just loosely stacked into your hopper. There we go. So as you see, we struggled there a little bit at the start, but then we eventually got it through. And we're going to do a four stack that are basically really tightly compacted onto the, into there. Okay, go ahead. Got it. And so what we're seeing right here is, is the byproduct of using the thrifty uh, squishy wheels is that they don't actually, we're not using any spacers right now. Uh, and so what's happening is they're actually moving around, which is causing a change in uh, compression against the vectored intake wheels, which is changing how um, the wheels interact with the vectoring effect. Uh, and secondly, with all the balls trying to jam towards the center, uh, it's causing a bit of a jam right there. And so I know in 2017, some teams bias their centering, um, or I guess it would be vectoring, to one side. Um, but for us, we're trying to make the centering work so that we can effectively just put our shooter right here in the center and avoid our swerve drive modules. Uh, so with that said, we'll go ahead and do a full stack and kind of show what that looks like. So we're, right now, we're, we basically reset the two inch compliant wheels. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and do a full power test and see how this cycles. Go ahead, stop. So it's important to note here that um, we didn't actually be able to shove uh, the rest of the balls through because we had a, a jam up here. Uh, so normally the shooter will be feeding those away, so we would have actually been able to remove those pretty effectively there. So um, as of right now with our current setup, we are a little bit hit or miss whether we're clearing the jam, the all the balls through really fast, um, or we, enter, we encounter a jam. Um, so there may be some efforts that we can do via code where we um, toggle the power um, but right now we're just using the Thrifty Nova controller right now and just kind of toggling it manually. Um, and so not a whole bunch of a control that we can do there besides just powering it up and powering it down. Um, but right now we think we've seen enough that we're happy with to move forward and continue iterating and seeing how we can improve this mechanism. Um, but we'll just have to see uh, how everything works together and then as a whole system. Um, but for now we're pretty happy with what we're seeing.
I mean, that's a good problem to have. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check out more Cranberry Alarm RI3D videos. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. The Studica Robotics Nav X3 CAN is the next generation IMU for FRC teams. With a new gyro, accelerometer, magnetometer, and CAN FD connectivity, it delivers accurate data, easy calibration, and better control. First teams can apply for a 25% off discount at studica.com slash robots. And don't forget to check out their new bonded wire and pre-drilled extrusion available now for the rebuilt season. Oshcut is the premier metal cutting service for first teams. No minimum order, options for same day turnaround, 3D tube laser cutting, and with nearly 500 variations of metal in stock and ready to cut. Just upload a file and claim your 50% off discount when you scan the QR code or go to funroboticsnetwork.com slash OSHCUT.